so in the previous video we introduced the pdes and in this video we are uh, uh, going to look at how to solve these pdes okay and what an approximate solution is and how we achieve that approximate solution just a brief overview of how to solve a pde okay so we know that pde represent a specific problem and the now the challenge is how to solve this pd uh, in introductory mathematical courses in high school level math mathematical uh, courses you might have uh, solved the differential equations the ordinary differential equations of first order second order and so on using special uh, met uh, methods like uh, variable separable substitution methods etc so all these methods are actually analytical solutions that you do on paper by symbolic manipulations but for complicated domains such kind of solution is not always possible okay for very complicated 3d parts very complicated 3d domains with different topologies it's a very it's not possible to get analytical clues from solutions okay so what we uh, uh, do is we we solve this problem numerically okay by solving numerically what do we mean is we we try to find out an approximate solution okay so uh, analytical solution is uh, basically symbolic manipulation that we do on the paper and numerical solution is uh, is, is actually a, a, an, an algorithm that we implement or solve using a computer okay so one such numerical method amongst various others is a uh, finite element method that that's what this course is all about <coughs> so fm is mostly used in structural analysis heat transfer fluid flow mass transfer on any electromagnetic potential uh, this kind of these classes of problems and we'll be dealing with structural analysis for the 80% part of this course and and, and for 10 to 20 10 to 20% will be touching over the heat transfer problems to introduce some of the concepts i note that uh, <coughs> We'll be using ODEs, which are actually subsets of PDEs, special case of PDEs, to 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 establish some uh, concepts. And uh, uh, we know that PD, the output of a PDE is a function of several variables. And for ODEs, this output is a function of single variable. For example, f of x is the output of ODE, and for PDE, it would be f of x, y, z, etc. Okay, so we'll be using ODE to uh, establish certain things okay so let us try to represent the differential equation abstractly in a compact form so consider these three differential equations so we can write these differential equation in an abstract form as l u is equal to zero here u is what we are solving for a function of x ux and x is the domain in which uh, your u is defined <coughs> And L is the operator, a kind of differential operator that actually represent a differential equation. Okay, this is how we represent a differential equation in a compact form. Now, uh, <coughs> how to find out the U? We know that in a numerical uh, solution to these PDEs, the solution we are uh, uh, trying to get is an approximate solution. Okay, so we are trying to solve it numerically, and u x is the actual solution, and u h s u h of x is the uh, approximate solution that we want to find out, and u x lies in some infinite dimensional space. Okay, <coughs> this u x lies in some infinite dimensional space, and u h x lies in some finite dimensional space. What this this thing means, we'll discuss later in, in the upcoming slides. And this this finite dimensional space is a sub space of the infinite dimensional space in which actual solution lies we'll get some intuitive picture of what does this, this mean the the, the last part of this uh, on this video uh, so the the approximate solution is represented or constructed uh, like this it's a summation of a product of two, two things where one is a function that we choose and another one are the scalar coefficient that we want to find out so that we can represent our approximate solution okay and it's as close as possible to the actual solution okay so we choose these functions psi j's okay and we want to find out 
CJs. So let us introduce some of the concepts of uh, linear algebra called vector spaces. Okay, this is not a mathematically rigorous definition. Definition. We just want to introduce some of the things such that uh, the things that follows make sense to you. So uh, a point in a three D space can be represented as a combination, a linear combination of the basis vector i, j, and k. Okay, so this kind of combination to represent a point or a vector in 3D is called a linear combination. Who is linear combination? It's a linear combination of the basis vectors i, j, k. We call sometimes call them unit vectors in 3D uh, for in context of 3D spaces. Okay, so these i, j, k are the basis vectors, and any point in this 3D space can be represented as a weighted sum of this uh, uh, basis function. Okay, so this type of representation or this type of combination is called a linear combination <clears throat> okay the c1 c2 c3 uh, represent actually the the length along that particular direction for example c1 is a length uh, uh, sorry this should be this sh this should be i this should be j this should be i okay so c2 is a length along this then this will be c2 and this will be c1 so just a typo okay so the coefficients basically represent the, the 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 amount in by which you should move in the particular direction and the combination of those steps give you the position of the point in the 3d space so what if we extend this idea of a 3D space, 3D geometric space to a functional space such that every point in that particular space, some abstract space that you can't visualize is a function, like a point in the 3D space, okay? So it's very difficult to visualize the functional space because it's an abstract idea which actually developed from the, uh, from the concept of the geometric uh, space. So you can th think the functional space keeping the geometric picture in mind. <coughs> Okay, so the every point in a functional space is a function okay and what would be the basis vectors of those functional spaces the basis vectors are the basis functions actually so each passive vector is a function and you can represent every function in that functional space as a linear combination of the basis functions okay similar to so this equation p you can represent a linear combination of uh, the basis vectors i j k i j, I, j and k similarly you can represent uh, a, a function in a functional space as a linear combination of its basis functions okay each basis is a function okay not you can't visualize that just think of this kind of picture this kind of geometric picture Okay, uh, let us discuss what are orthogonality in context of functions. Okay, so uh, from now on, but uh, a vector we will consider vector uh, as a general abstract notion because a geometric vector, a functional vector, they, these are all vectors. Okay, not you, you should, shouldn't simply imagine a vector as a uh, as a arrow. Okay, anything can be a vector. Uh, there are few properties that mathematical properties that it to satisfy but we we won't go that deep okay so simply uh, we a function is also a vector and uh, uh, this normal point coordinate is also a vector so what do you, what do you mean by orthogonal functions it doesn't make any sense uh, because uh, we know what an orthogonal set of vectors is uh, geometric vectors is because they are at 90 degree to each other so in context of function what orthogonality means is that uh, the the relation between the two functions okay if two functions are orthogonal that means they are totally different okay the, the information contained in one is totally different from the information contained in the another each one provides some unique information okay so for example sugar and chili are orthogonal to each other because they are totally different but sugar and jaggery are not because there is some kind of overlap because both are sweet are different kind of sweet but they are not orthogonal so how do you represent, how do you check whether the functions are orthogonal or not? We use inner products for a particular vector space. Okay. Now, see vector spaces. This is, a, we can have, a, this, is, this one is a geometric vector space. 
and and we could have functional space okay so we, we generally call them vector spaces okay so there, there there will be an inner product defined inner product defined in a vector space and using that we'll define the orthogonality similar to the dot product defined in the uh, 3d geometric space okay what is inner product and how do we define it we'll see in the later part okay regarding the dimension of uh, a vector space so uh, for example you can consider a 2d plane okay it's just two dimensions a 3d space it has three dimensions what about a 4d space we can't visualize it but it may exist similarly for the functional space we could have an n-dimensional functional space okay so in a n-dimensional functional space you will have n basis function for example in the 3d space you have three directions or three basis functions okay so each dimension has to represent a specific direction specific unique direction in which you want to move so uh, that's what the idea of dimension for a vector space is a vector space can have n number of dimensions so what about a span okay if we know that uh, this is a linear combination this is a linear combination okay, for a particular point what if we allow the c1 c2 and c3 to be to vary arbitrarily Okay, any possible combination of ijk and infinitely possible combinations are possible so uh, what if we allow all possible combination and we trace the path of this point p what we'll get is a complete space complete 3d space okay we can take any c1 c2 c3 you want and add them up and multiply and add them up and get the p and plot all those p's we'll get the complete 3d space okay each c1 c2 c3 values from minus infinity to plus infinity so what we can say that a vector space is nothing but a span of its basis function this expression a vector space is nothing but the span of its basis function for this the 3d space is a span of its basis functions i j and k okay so any vector space can be written as a span of its basis vectors <coughs> now let us understand how, how the construction of the uhx this is nothing but a linear combination of the basis functions and the coefficients. These are basis functions in a functional space similar to ij and k. And these are the coefficients like the coordinates okay, or the length of the basis vectors that makes that particular function. Okay, so this uhx is nothing but a point in a functional space okay, that is constructed by a linear combination of the basis function note that basis functions is what we choose okay that defines the function in which you are searching once you have chosen the basis functions you have fixed the space in which you are searching your solution okay and see this is what you want to find out so that this uh is closer to the actual solution how we calculate this cj is what we are going to discuss in the next module and uh, but here we just want to discuss the idea of approximation Okay, so the actual solution is lying in somewhere in the infinite dimensional space. Okay, and we are searching in a finite dimensional space. Okay, some n dimensional space. Okay, it might be possible that the, sol the, the space in which you are searching your solution uh, is the same space as where your solution lies. Okay, in that case, you'll get the exact solution. The approximation is the exact solution in if you are searching in that spe specific space. Okay, but this, this this may happen for simple problem for but complicated domain sheets almost impossible okay let's get some intuitive picture of what we have discussed till now okay we are solving a pd okay we are solving a pd that represents a problem and uh, and the solution lies in this infinite dimensional space let this solution be this okay this is the actual solution we don't know what it is obviously but we assume that suppose this is the actual solution <coughs> And the space that in which we are searching our solution is the trial space. Okay, this is finite dimension. This is not infinite dimension. Okay, so it will have some finite number of basis functions that define this functional space. Okay, we call this a trial space in which we are searching our solution. Okay, so so in this space, if you want to find out your actual solution, the best you can get is this. Okay, this is actually nothing but the projection of your actual solution in your trial space okay so this is what we are attempting to find 
okay as you can see that if you increase the dimension uh, in this particular picture the area of this space will increase and it would cover the complete solution it might cover okay but you need to increase the dimensions okay this is this we'll see this uh, what this does this mean in the context of fem later okay so uh, this is what we want to find out the projection is what is the approximate solution and it is what we want to find out we want we want to find out those cjs that will help us get to this orange dotted solution or the, trial, or the projected solution now the basis function of this uh, uh, space let's call it a trial space v could be psi 1 psi 2 and so on psi n okay these are the basis uh, function of this n dimensional functional space v trial space now we can write v as a span of all these basis functions right we can write v as a span of all the basis functions okay similar to ijk ijk spans the 3d 3d vector space 3d geometric space and this psi 1 psi 2 and psi n span the trial space yeah so that's it for this video uh uh, so in this video we discussed what an approximate solution is what a finite dimensional space is what is trial space is and what are the basis functions and discuss how we construct an approximate solution in the next video we are going to uh, study several methods that will help us get this trial solution so we are we have already chosen psi j's okay just and the one thing that's remaining now is the calculation of the coefficient the psi i's Okay, so that we'll do in the next uh, next video. Uh, yeah, thank you for your time. That's it for this video.